Hello everyone, I'm Nazarat Fatima. Welcome to Live Law. You all might be aware of the controversial case of Bilkis Bano who was gang raped in the year 2002 during the Gujarat riots. But if you want to know the case in detail, please visit our website which is www.livelaw.in and check out the report for an elaborate version of the story. And after watching the video, please tell us in the comment section whether you agree with the stance maintained by the ASG or are there alternative ways to deal with the issue. Lately, the Supreme Court questioned as to why the policy for premature release was being applied selectively during the hearing. This question was in response to the Gujarat government advocating for prisoners convicted of heinous crimes being given a chance of reformation by being prematurely released from jail on showing contrition and after serving their time. Justice Nagaratna asked and I quote, Why is the policy of remission being applied selectively and how far is this law being applied to inmates in jail? Why are our jails so overcrowded, particularly with under trials? Why is the policy of remission being applied selectively? The Gujarat government did not only argue that the remission was legal and was granted after taking into consideration all factors required to be examined under the law, but it also invoked the reformative theory of punishment. The additional Solicitor General S. V. Raju, appearing on behalf of the state government, asked as to what was the purpose of remission. With this question, he further submitted and I quote, Is the purpose of remission punishment? Does committing a heinous crime debar a convict from getting its benefit? Even if the convict has reformed themselves, has displayed remorse and wants to start a new life again, should the past always be dangling above your head? Should these convicts be condemned for all the times to come? These are the questions. He said that the policy of remission is different from that of sentencing and also laid emphasis over the notion that deterrent theory does not apply to the question of remission since the convict has already undergone 14 or more years of rigorous imprisonment. He said that completing this sentence was sufficient deterrence. He also said that when the crime is punishable with the death penalty and the court has handed out a life sentence, it is indicative of the fact that it was not such a heinous crime. It is not the rarest of rare cases. In response to this argument, Justice Nagaratna clarified that it was held to be heinous but not the rarest of rare. Explaining the scope of reformation, the ASD argued and I quote, where it is not the rarest of rare case, surely a convict should be given the chance to reform themselves. They may have committed an offence in the moment but may have later realised their consequences. Whether the convict has realised the consequences can be determined on the basis of their conduct in jail or when they are released on parole or furlough. All these factors show that the convict has now realized what they did was wrong. He said that the law does not say that every convict should be hanged or even punished perpetually and that the law speaks about giving a chance to even the most hardened criminal to reform themselves. Justice Nagaratna once again questioned the selective usage of this principle. The ASG admitted that it would be difficult for him to provide a general answer to this question as to how many inmates who are under trial prisoners are given the same treatment. Justice Nagaratna said and I quote, You will have to have the statistics, the statewide statistics. The opportunity to reform should be given to every prisoner, not only to a few prisoners. Meanwhile, senior advocate Siddharth Luthra stated, that the moment a convict completes 14 years, they have to prove their case for premature release and they have a module in each and every district of each and every state in place. Yet again, Justice Nagaratna asked, but how far is the remission policy being implemented in cases where convicts have completed 14 years? Is remission policy being implemented in all such cases subject of course to their eligibility? The ASG tried to convince the bench that the concurrent sentence handed to the convicts indicated that the court wanted to avail the convicts the benefit of a remission policy. He said that the ordinary rule is a concurrent sentence, but courts have been known to award consecutive sentences as well. Therefore, the court was not so carried away by the fact that these offences were so heinous, they required consecutive sentences. This argument seemingly did not appear to find favour with the bench. Justice Nagaratna interjected, saying, here the highest punishment is awarded after the death penalty. When life imprisonment is awarded, it has to be concurrent. It cannot be consecutive. There is only one life, hopefully. The ASG explained, and I quote, my submission is that the court could have said that the second sentence would continue after remission in the first. This was not done in the case. In response, Justice Nagaratna asked, 
So you're saying that since no period was specified and their sentences were of life imprisonment simply without any qualification, virtually they have the right to come out after 14 years. The ASG explain that it is because of the policy and that they have the right to be considered. He said if the opinion is favourable, they would be released at the state's discretion and the issue is whether the state has exercised its discretion correctly. Moreover, the ASG tried to explain that the consideration of the courts should also be understood by referring to the contents of the judgment and the sentence imposed. He submitted that in his opinion, the court was definitely of the view that the convicts would get the benefit of the 1992 policy and this shows the mind of the courts. In addition to this, he contended that the Gujarat government has complied with all the requirements under law when granting remission. These were some of the major arguments made by the additional Solicitor General S.V. Raju and the bench has adjourned the hearing until August 24, 2023. There is a detailed version of the arguments on our website which is www.livelaw.in. If you want to read the elaborate explanations of the arguments and contentions made in the court, please check out our website. That's all about it for now. We hope you like our content. If you do, please like and share our videos. Also, subscribe to our channel on YouTube and don't forget to press the bell icon for notifications. Thank you for watching.